let's keep talking about Article 250, grounding and bonding. 250.70, termination types for electrodes. This section was editorially revised and an informational note was added. I'm going to be honest, it was simplified. Uh, 250.70 is a lot smaller than it used to be. What they used to do in 250.70 is they said, hey man, you can use this or this or this or this or this or this or this. And now they finally said, hey, uh, just use stuff that's listed. <laughs> and, and that's all we have to talk about, right? So they made this a lot simpler. And the informational note that they added, I am so happy to see. I, look, I'm just going to be honest. I think we have too many informational notes in the code. Uh, but I think this one is a really good one. This gives some real world practical information that a lot of people would not have known about it, but for this informational note. So let's take a peek at 250.70. A general connections to electrodes must be made by exothermic welding or by listed methods, including lugs, clamps, or pressure connectors. Awesome. Well, look, there's no such thing as a listed exothermic weld because that's something that we do in the field, of course. So it has to be a listed method or exothermic welding. So exothermic welding like that, certainly an option. The fittings have to be listed for the material of the electrode and the conductor. And it must be listed for concrete encasement or direct burial as needed. Okay, so right there, direct burial. Perfect. We know we're good to go, go there. What about concrete encasement? Well, we'll talk about that next. The material is bronze alloy. We reach down and it says, okay, pipe ring. Look at the look at the type of clamp that we're talking about here. I always called this a water pipe clamp in the field, and I'm sure most people do too. But guess what? That is also listed for rebar. And it's listed for ground rods. I mean, look at it, right? So there, pipe, rebar, ground rod. Then it gives the wire range, 10 gauge solid through 2 gauge stranded. Mechanical connection slash splice, two 8 gauge solids. Hmm. All right, multiple conductors. Well, that's good because listen, here's the rule. Only one conductor is allowed for termination fitting unless the fitting is listed for multiple connections. And that's not just true here in 250.70. That's the general requirement, right? If you go all the way back to 110.14, it says, look, man, any termination is only good for one conductor unless it's specifically identified otherwise, or in this case, unless it's specifically listed otherwise. So having two ground clamps on this one ground rod, that's fine. You can, you can put 50 of them on a ground rod. I don't care. What you cannot do is put two wires under the same clamp unless it's listed for it. Now, let's go back. So here I've got two, what, and by the way, what this was, it might be a little bit hard to see, but can you see right there where you, there's two enclosures back to back? This is temporary power for, for two job sites right next to each other, right? Two houses that are under construction. So I've got two temporary pedestals buried in the dirt, and they're each connected to one ground rod with two grounding electrode conductors and two clamps. Perfect. Not a problem. Can both of them share one rod? Absolutely. In fact, that's the requirement. Take a look at uh, 250.58, right? So one ground rod, perfectly fine. Two ground rods six feet apart, that would be okay too. Guess what? If they were closer than six feet, they'd have to be connected together. So use one rod, not a problem. Could I have used this clamp and just installed two wires under the one clamp? Well, let's see. Ground rod, inch or quarter inch to one inch ground rod. So yeah, that looked like a 5 8 rod to me. Maybe it was 3 quarter. Or <clears throat> yeah, it was definitely 5 8 um, Wire range, 10 gauge solid to 2 gauge stranded. It looked to me like those conductors were 6 gauge stranded. And it says 2 8 gauge solid. So yeah, there you go. For indoor communication systems, a listed sheet metal strap can be used. All right. Um, this has always been a violation, okay? If you go outside to your house, you might see this thing installed on your service lateral conduit from your communications utility, right? So Comcast or whoever it is, a lot of times they'll put this little strap around the service lateral or the, uh, or the riser and they'll connect the conductor that bonds their stuff. Now, is that a violation? Well, <laughs> That strap is designed for indoor use only, and it's supposed to go to electrodes, not pipes. But here's the thing, man, that's a communications utility, right? Read 90.2 uh, D4, and it says communications utility installations are exempt, so they can do this. You and I can't, but they can. 
Here's the change that I love, the informational note. It says clamps that are listed for direct burial are also listed for concrete encasement. Love it. Now that's been the case for a long time. That's actually part of the product standard. If you send your clamp to UL or Intertech or somebody and you say, hey man, test this clamp and I want it listed for direct burial, guess what? They're gonna test it for direct burial and they're gonna test it for concrete encasement. And if you don't pass both tests, they're gonna send it back and say, you fail. You have to satisfy both requirements in order to get listed for either one. So if your product is listed, now I'm just talking grounding clamps, okay? I don't, I'm not saying every conduit, I'm just saying for grounding clamps, if it's listed for direct burial, it is also listed for concrete encasement. If it's listed for concrete encasement, it is also listed for direct burial. You can see right there, direct burial, awesome. Well, look, you're putting it on rebar. You're probably not directly burying it. You're putting it in concrete. Fine, it's listed for both. Love that they added this information.